Hi guys, I'm Diana and this is Narrow Dreams uh, and this video is going to be about uh, preparing for winter. So as you can see it's uh, still quite dark. This is seven o'clock on Friday morning. Now you may think that the garden doesn't look all that dark and the top of the boat doesn't. The reason why, sorry about the glare, but that is the light outside our boat. Um, it's just to light up the um, the path for everybody coming down to the garden moorings because as I'm sure you can imagine, um, it, it would be quite difficult in the dark. You can see up there, that's the path to go into the main part of the marina and that down there is the path down to the rest of the garden moorings so the light is to make it safer for everybody to to go down because as i say it's seven o'clock in the morning we're just getting ready to take sam to work um, but it's still quite dark really and uh, it, it's dark by seven o'clock at night and obviously soon it will be dark by sort of half past four when we get to December so as I say we're we're getting ready for winter now as you can maybe see the grass on the garden mooring is quite long because the only chance Neil gets to do it is uh, on a weekend um, and every weekend we've had for the past couple um, the grass has been very very wet so we're hoping to be able to uh, get another cut before winter because it's you know it's longer than we would like um, so getting ready for winter um, obviously involves getting uh, fuel for the fire so in there don't think you can see it very well not much light but we've got some logs um, we've got to get some coal um, because we want to be able to uh, keep the boat warm. We have started having the odd few fires uh, and I'm, it's a bit chilly this morning. I'm perhaps going to light one when I get back from taking Sam to work. So this is, uh, this is our walk down to the car in the morning past all the other garden moorings or some of them anyway and as you can see it you know it is light enough to see what you got with so obviously with the with the cold weather coming and the fact that we'll have the stove on cooking can change quite a bit because we can do uh, stews and soups on the stove we can do jacket potatoes inside the stove so that, that in turn that saves a bit of gas so it's uh, it's all good it's just starting to rain This is the uh, this is the marina before the sun comes up. So uh, another part of winter is having the fire on, and to me. That's the best part. So, we'll get it ready and light a fire. So, the um, bucket I've just brought out, the, uh, the ash pan, is uh, a metal, metal pan. Um, it's just like a, it's like a briefcase really, um, made of metal and it's 
idea for putting the ashes in you can uh, take the tray out drop it in there and shut the lid straight away so that you don't get uh, too much dust and then if I get the shovel and just rake through all the ashes from yesterday See, we've got another full pan of ash there again it goes in and shut the lid and that can go back in um, every couple of days I get the poker and I do the hole of the bottom as well because you get um, down in the bottom you get some ash that doesn't fall in the tray so uh, but I don't do that every day just every couple of days so we'll put that back they are quite cool so no problem because the fire's not been on since yesterday afternoon. If they were warm, I would put that ash pan outside to cool. Um, once the ashes are stone cold, we take them up and put them in the bin. Um, so, just want to get the dust that's fallen onto there. And just shove that back in there. So one another thing I like to do while it's cold because it's uh, it's obviously easier you don't burn your hands is to clean the glass you can see how dirty all this is with soot um, I have to do that every day really because it, it still soaks up so this I don't know if you can see this is just a, a white vinegar spray um, these are actually um, cloths there eco-friendly they're made from um, bamboo and it's a, a company called soul good stuff um, and they're, they're like a kitchen roll um, but they're washable um, and they're washable oh well I've, I've had them six months and I wash them regularly and they're still perfectly good to use um, but as I say, they're, they're made from bamboo and you can use them in any way that you would use kitchen roll, but they're obviously a lot more durable. So we'll clean that. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. Um, so that at least we'll be able to see what's going on with the fire. For a while at least anyway. So I would start by putting... <clears throat> some kindling um, I tend to buy this just in bags of just rough wood that's cut up um, the reason I buy it rather than um, get it from the towpath or whatever is because it's kiln dried so you've, you've not got any green wood in there um, and also because um, it doesn't soak your chimney up as much. Um, Neil has um, swept the chimney on the weekend in preparation for winter. Um, so we're all good to go. I'll put some fire lighters in there. Um, and then obviously I need some matches. We normally have one of these um, lighter things but it's run out of gas at the minute so until I fill it up I'll just use matches so it doesn't need many fire lighters you can see that they're going so I'll put a little bit more kindling on so that that catches enough 
kindling. Sorry, I think the uh, camera's falling off a bit, but that's fine. Uh, so, now we've put a few bits of coal on. Um, just got some, some little tongs, fire tongs, um, and I'll just put a few cobbles on. Once it's going, then I use the shovel and, and put a, a decent amount on. But just to get it going, just put a few cobbles on. It's quite dark in this bucket, I can't see what I'm doing to be honest. I may have to use the shovel because the bucket's not full. that to get going and then I'll uh, I'll top it up a bit more when it has obviously I'll remove those cloths off the top um, all our coal and wood and everything that we keep in metal buckets because obviously you don't want wood stacked up at the side of your fire um, you don't want any um, plastic buckets or anything like that because obviously these get very very hot so I'll shut the door up. Now it has two um, vents on it. The top one is for the chimney. We always leave that one open so that it's got a draw from the chimney. The bottom one is currently open, um, but once it gets going, then I move this across and shut it down, which reduces the airflow from underneath. Um, and by doing that, over winter, if we bank the fire up, we can actually keep it in all night um, and it keeps the boat nice and warm. Uh, so that basically is the process of making the fire. So as you can see, the fire's, uh, the fire's going quite nicely now. A um, couple of things I didn't um, mention. Um, you can see the fan on the top there. Um, that is to help circulate the heat from the fire uh, down to the other end of the boat. Uh, I mean, if you look, there's sort of all the um, bedroom area and everything down there. Um, we think it actually does um, help once the fire's going and it's, um, it's up to temperature. We think that does help. Um, it's it's um, advisable also to have the fan where we've got it, which is behind the chimney, um, because obviously the chimney heats up quite a lot as well. So it's also um, blowing the, the hot air that you get um, from the chimney down the boat as well. So we do think that that helps, as you can see. I've got the kettle on as well. That's the great thing about having the fire on. Uh, and another thing that we have is um, a sort of a little temperature thing. Now, as you can see, it's it's not moved far yet because I've only just lit the fire um, and it takes a while for it to heat up. But once it gets into the red, it, it has come up off the, uh, off the bottom. So it's starting to warm. Um, but once it gets into the red, uh, that's sort of the ideal, the optimal temperature to have it and it does get up there um, when it's been going a bit so what else do we need to do for winter um, because we're liverboards we don't have to do as much as if we were leaving the boat over winter and, and not using it so if that's the case if you've got a boat or you get in a boat uh, for leisure use uh, you need to look into how to winterize your boat because obviously things like um, you know draining off water and things like that um, because it could freeze and you're not there uh, is quite important but because we're here the boat stays warm um, because we're heating it all the time and um, you know we're using 
um, all the systems, then it's not quite the same. But there are certain things that we have to do. Uh, and one of those is um, topping up with diesel. At the weekend, we will go and make sure that the diesel is full in the tank because um, over winter, um, condensation can form in your diesel tank. Um, and if you get water in your diesel, um, then that's what can cause diesel bug and it can cause all sorts of problems. So uh, to help counteract that, um, if you keep your tank full, then it doesn't uh, leave that space for condensation to form. So that's something we'll be doing at the weekend. Um, we'll obviously be um, up in our um, stocks of coal and, and wood. Um, we, we sort of get them in bulk and we'll be doing that over the next couple of weeks because uh, at the minute we're not having a fire every day and we're certainly not leaving it in um, all day or overnight it's sort of we, we light it in the morning like I've just done to, to heat the boat up um, and then we generally let it go out and it, it usually stays warm enough um, it won't be long before that's not the case uh, and we're, we're having to use it a lot more so we will be getting more stocks of coal and and wood um, we also because we buy kiln dried logs as well um, to burn we have got some logs that we've collected but they've got to be thoroughly dried out we won't probably be able to use those this year um, so we will um, be buying the the kiln dried stuff because as I say it doesn't clog your chimney up as much uh, they burn better um, don't spit that sort of thing so that's why we tend to buy them um, another thing we will do over winter is to make sure that we keep our water topped up um, because uh, we're on a marina um, the water pipes obviously come down to the boats to, to taps all along um, where we are down the garden moorings but they are lagged but over winter um, they can freeze so we will make sure that it's topped up regularly so that if it does freeze we're not going to be left with a, an empty uh, tank so uh, that's that's one precaution to to make sure we you know stay on top of uh, the water pipes and the um, the water tank the calorifier are all um, insulated they're lagged and things which again is important for, for winter um, and the the boat um, is well insulated so once we've got that fire going it, it tends to stay really warm and it's it's not uh, such a problem a bigger problem is how to cool it down if it gets too uh, too warm and we tend to have to you know it's a it's a thing that a lot of boaters will joke about but you light the fire and you open all the doors and windows and put your shorts on because it can get uh, pretty warm but we've got quite good over last winter at regulating it with the two valves that I showed you and things so that actually it warms up and then it, it tends to just stay nice and warm uh, so um, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video I hope you've you've found something helpful if there's anything I've missed um, anything that um, you do to prepare for winter uh, then if you could just drop that in the comments that would be great um, if you're not subscribed please do um, it's free obviously and it will if you click the bell icon it will tell you when new videos are uploaded um, and if you've as I say if you've liked the video then do give it a please so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time